What's up, YouTube? Today I'm going to do a Star War, uh, Star Lord walk and prop that is also going to fit my phone into it so that I can plug in headphones and jam out. This is, of course, to go along with my Star Lord mask that I did in a recent build video. Also, once I hit a thousand subscribers, which I am fast approaching, I will be giving away this Doctor Fate helmet in a drawing. So stay tuned for that, if nothing else. And yeah, this is a fairly simple build. It's made out of EVA foam, uh, cassette tape, some glue, and some paint. So let's go ahead and jump right into the build. Okay, some of the first things and materials that I'm starting off with here are... I got this iHome, is the brand. It is a adapter to put in a cassette player. I don't know if you still have a cassette player or a car that has a cassette player and not like a CD player or whatever. I guess maybe you would need this. I don't really 100% understand it. It's seems a little bit out of time and place here, but it had a cord coming out of it with an AV cable. However, I already took and just crudely ripped that out of there because all I need is essentially cassette tape. Uh, I had a hard time finding these except for online where I had to order like 50. Maybe I'm just looking in the wrong place. I don't know. One thing you'll notice here is that there is writing on one side, no writing on the other. I'm going to use the side with no writing on it. And you'll also notice that the actual set tape is clear. I couldn't find a clear one, so you may want to uh, obsess over that detail and find yourself a clear cassette tape. But yeah, this is just a prop and this is what I'm doing. I don't have a whole lot of time. Take this, discard that. Also, conveniently enough in here is the silver... Uh, cardboard liner in the back of it and it's quite metallic and good looking so I might actually use this piece for here as opposed to painting it I don't know but we'll see I'm gonna save it either way just in case next what I'm gonna do is I took this you can find this online printed out it's basically his Walkman it's good for reference I just wanted it for the label I'm gonna cut out the inside here and then around the border It'll also be my reference for how big the window is going to be, uh, so you can actually see inside of there. And, yeah, it shows you all the knobs and buttons. I mean, really, the easiest thing to do would just be to go buy yourself a vintage Walkman, done. Or, uh, make a cardboard box based on this dimensions and just glue, paste, tape this to the outside of it. But, I'm going to go way beyond that, and probably even almost pointlessly so, make this faux Walkman. So, yeah, first thing cut out this label here. I did use, as you'll notice, the shine from my lights reflecting back in. I did use some packaging tape, so this will be a little bit more durable whenever I contact cement it on. Alright, so I cut out my label and attached it with contact cement. I also took a couple of pieces of some 10 millimeter black EVA foam and just kind of hacked them up to look like the little things that run the tape itself. Then in the center of that silver that you see there is just a couple dots of this Model Masters silver chrome paint. I do thin this out with a little bit of paint thinner, but yeah, I just took the end of a paintbrush and dabbed it on each one. So that's pretty much it for the cassette tape prep. Next, what I have to do is make the window that you see the actual cassette tape through. And what this is is eighth, uh, one eighth inch thick clear plastic acrylic. It has this protective coating on it so it doesn't get all scratched up. This stuff's pretty cool. Uh, there is a cutting tool. I don't know how to use this apparently because after watching the Lady in the Wind video on Ami use it, she just kind of scored it and broke it. Which is essentially what happens, which is why you don't have this straight line, because it didn't work very well. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use this to draw on the size of it, and I'm actually just going to use my Dremel rotary tool to cut it out. Okay, so I have my little window cut out here, and I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side. Now, to cut this out, I was going to do it on camera and speed it up. I'm glad I didn't, because this took about a half hour. And even time lapse, it's going to be like five minutes, and would have been a total waste of time. But, I used my Dremel cutting wheel to cut out the initial shape here and then after that I just put on a sanding wheel here I'm running it at about 20 and I use that to finish shaping it the rest of the way of course I can't get the cuts with this cutting wheel perfect 
Now, this acrylic, if you choose to use some of this, I purchased this on Amazon. All you have to do is look up uh, 1 8 inch uh, acrylic sheets, but I will put a link to that if I remember in the description. And if I don't leave a comment, let me know that I didn't. LOL. But yeah, this stuff is pretty inexpensive, but it's a little tricky to work with because it is shapeable with heat. What I mean is you can use a heat gun to bend this, curve it, uh, shape it in a number of ways, which is a nice thing, but when you're using something like a rotary tool, you have to be very careful and go pretty slow because it will melt and warp it, but when you get done, you get this perfect, well, aside from my fingerprints and smudges on this, a perfectly almost glass-like clear uh, <clears throat> Uh, surface to see through and I want to say this stuff lets through like 98% of light so it's you know really close to glass and you can see like there's not uh, you know any, any sort of opacity to it and if you can see there is this white dust here all over everything so definitely make sure that you use a respirator and some goggles, safety goggles when you're doing this because little bits of this were flying up and getting all over me and you don't want to breathe that in. And also, it's a little bit hot, so it can sting. You definitely don't want that getting in your eyes. Okay, so I took and glued the window into the middle of this EVA foam hunk that I cut and then I used an X-Acto knife to score some lines in it and use my heat gun to help open those lines up. Uh, and it comes out looking something like this. And on the back side here, I just use some super glue to glue this in and use a couple of scrap pieces of foam to help even it out. Because ultimately what this is going to be, of course, is a place for, to slide my phone inside of. So I can have my headphone jack coming out and running up to my uh, ear, uh, inside of the mask. I'm going to mount the headphones. And for reference here, just to show you... So I cut the line here and the line here. This, of course, isn't like a prop accurate size. It's meant to fit my phone more so than anything. So if you're wondering, is this a little big? Yeah, it's a little big. My phone's a little big. So it has to fit that. But it came out looking pretty cool. And this foam is about 10 millimeters thick. It comes in a giant roll like this, okay? And as you notice on the back side here, there is some texture. It's not totally flat. I end up usually clipping those down with some scissors and sanding them out with a Dremel. Next, I'm going to take the Dremel and I am going to sand out all these bumps all along the inside edge here. So that when I go to glue my side pieces and the back on, this will be nice and flush. Alright, next I cut another rectangle that I traced out of the final size of this. And I did use my Dremel to grind this edge flat so I could glue these pieces on evenly. So that'll be the back side. And I measured the width that I needed to go in between them so that I have enough space to allow my phone to slide in. And I'm going to go ahead and start contact cementing all these pieces. <coughs> Here's all four sides glued together. Of course, this isn't perfect, so I'm going to even this out with the Dremel. Man, that window is just uber nice. I'm going to have to wipe all my fingerprints off it still, but man, that is just so much better than using packaging plastic or anything like that. When the light hits it, it just reflects so well. Okay, anyways, yeah, so you can see, didn't do a perfect job here, so I'm going to sand down and smooth out these edges. And the white stuff here is some um, Alex uh, Plus from DAP. It is a acrylic silicone plus latex and there was a hole in the foam manufacturing defect in the foam in the foam's porous but yeah it was there so i went ahead and filled that gap if you don't have a hole in your foam you don't need to worry about filling it so yeah i'm gonna take my dremel and even out all these seams where i glued it all together all right so the first bit of sanding on these seams i'm going to be using a rough grit uh head here on the sander and that'll be just uh, to help me take down the majority of this rather quickly.
All right, next I am switching to a finer grit one to do the finishing work, and I'm also going to turn the speed down a little bit. Had it around 20, I'm going to put it down to around 15. Okay, so all in all, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Helped to smooth and round everything out. I'm probably going to do a little bit of hand sanding, just to even out any spaces where I didn't get. And you'll probably notice I also cut down a groove in this backside. That's so I can grab my phone more easily out of here whenever I need to retrieve it. Okay, so next I'm going to do some hand sanding, and then we'll come back and seal and paint. Okay, so to seal this, I'm going to use some Mod Podge and a brush. And carefully brush it on here. Uh, careful not to get it on this nice acrylic here. I'm pretty sure I can clean it off, but I'm going to try to avoid it as much as possible anyways. And I took some scrap pieces of 3mm. The gray is 3mm and the green is 2mm. And I just put them on in an arrangement similar to that. And put this little hole here with the grinding wheel attachment on the Dremel. That's definitely not necessary. And I kind of almost regret doing it, but I did it. So it's done. And yeah... Just gonna start from the bottom and start brushing this up all with vertical strokes okay so to get the particular color of blue bluish purple that I'm gonna be uh, painting this with through my airbrush I had to mix a lot of different colors together uh, from white to uh, eggplant purple blue water uh, blue some transparent gray a little bit of Wicked Silver airbrush paint, uh, some odorless mineral spirits to help thin it out, and a little bit of uh, Windex to thin it out, and some tap water as well, or not tap water, but distilled water. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my air compressor if you had headphones. Three, two, one, beware. Turn this on. And you can see that I've wedged a piece of 2mm foam in there that I cut to size and shape to help mask it off. I'm just going to go ahead and start painting this. I'm going to paint the whole thing blue. I'm not going to so much worry about the side piece here. The side piece I'm going to paint by hand with some chrome silver model masters. I know I said I was just going to glue that cardboard to it, but that's just such a cheap cop out. And I don't think it would hold up and that wouldn't look, it would look good at first, but eventually no. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and paint this and then we'll come back and see how it looks. Okay, so I'm finished painting. I ended up actually thinning out some eggplant purple and doing sort of a translucent spray over the blue because it was just way too baby blue. And then all the silver here I painted with the Model Masters Chrome Silver. Now I do thin this out with odorless mineral spirits so it goes on more evenly. However, it's still a bit obnoxious. So to tone it down once it dries, I do an overspray with the, the uh, Createx colors, Wicked colors, Wicked Silver. This is thinned out a decent amount as well. And that just helps to tone this down so it doesn't look so obnoxious. It looks it's a little extreme before you overspray it. So yeah, this is about as far as I've gotten at this point. Uh, once this dries fully, I'm going to apply decals which I purchased from Etsy, and I will try to remember to leave a link to those in the description. If I don't, leave a comment if I forget the link, but I will put a link. When I purchased it, they only had four. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully there will be a link for me to, to, to send to you guys. But yeah. Alright, so you can see here, I already have the Sony decals on it. And these decals are pretty nice. Uh, they are a little tricky to mess with. 
but luckily you get two sets of each if you've done models and things like that then you probably already know how this works but I'm gonna go through and probably what is gonna be the longest segment of the video and show you how it's done included with these is a piece of contact uh, paper that you can cut up and one side of it you peel off this white paper backing here and there is adhesive on it and this adhesive you place on the actual decal to peel it off evenly line it up and apply it onto your piece so I'm gonna put the camera down here okay so I have my contact paper here and what I'm going for is the arrow I'm assuming these are laser cut but I did notice that if I bent this slightly and just got my thumb up underneath the end that I wanted to peel off and get it to, oh man, this is tough. I don't want to damage it. I ended up bending the S a little bit, but I felt lucky enough that I had gotten that close to getting it off. Okay, just so it's pried up a little bit, you can see it's barely up in my thumbnail. This is going to make it a lot easier to remove it with the contact paper. You can see here I've applied the contact paper over the decal. And this end that I already started to work up here And there we go. You now have the decal removed from the sheet and onto the contact paper. Next, I have to take that and apply it here as straight and as centered and as even as I can. Okay, and you can see here, gently peel this off after I press down the decal, and voila, there it is. Bam! Like I say, these decals are really going to make it. Initially, and this probably sounds crazy, but what I was going to do is try to meticulously cut these out after I printed them out with a, with a X-Acto knife, and then slowly glue them on. That would have been so much work and so much time but I'm going to go ahead and apply the last Walkman decal here at the bottom where it goes then we'll come back and take a look how, right, so here how it, it is completed is. and suffice it to say these decals definitely make it not look like just a block of foam that I cut some lines into and essentially just painted because that's really what it is but I'm also proud and happy to say that I only had to use one set I didn't screw anything up. I'm shocked at that. Uh, I, I hope to never have to do this again. Uh, now, <laughs> did you notice to pry this up, I was using my, 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 my uh, fingernail. I wouldn't suggest that. Using a razor blade to gently pry these up, or like your X-Acto knife if the blade is brand new to help loosen these edges. As you notice, I did the arrow for the demonstration. All I had to loosen was the end. For each one of these letters, I have to loosen each letter and slowly rock the contact paper back and forth. <laughs> First I do the S, then I loosen the O, I put it back, then I do the O, then I get the N, all the while keeping a piece of the contact paper here flush so that it will not get out of line or go out of whack or be uneven. So the letters are all straight and pretty much there. But you can see here even the dot in the middle of the A is a little bit off. And the W is a little bit too close, but otherwise, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go back and do this again. It's one and done. But yeah, bam, decals, my arch nemesis. All right, the next thing I did was took some hot glue and glued some Velcro to the back so I could attach this to my belt nice and secure. Uh, old school Walkmans had this clip where if you ran or jumped or did anything, they kind of came right off your belt. So I think it's funny see him in action scenes with this on 
And next what I'm going to do is a final seal. And I'm going to do that by hand, and I'm just going to seal up the blue paint here. The silver over here is that Model Masters, and it's tough enough on its own. It doesn't need any sort of clear coat over it. And also don't like putting acrylic clear coats over oil paints. You have bad reactions sometimes. So I'm just going to go ahead and Mod Podge over the blue area to give it a nice finish. And that's pretty much it for this project. It was simple. I mean, it's a rectangle, essentially. All right, so just to show you here, I have my slots where my phone can fit in. I have my case in here just to show you guys. And then, of course, just plug my headphones into here. And I can jam out tunes while I'm rocking my Star-Lord cosplay. Uh, next, I'm going to do the Star-Lord blasters. And also don't forget, once I get to 1,000 subscribers, which I'm fast approaching, I will be giving away this Dr. Fate helmet. So as always, hopefully this guy gave you some ideas, inspired you for your own cosplays and your own projects. And as always, thanks for watching.